This is Just a Thought, a podcast for parents ready to change their mind and change their lives. This podcast is packed full of the one thing that will change your life, your parenting, and your relationships. Don't believe me? It's just a thought. I'm your host, Christina Stead, and this is episode 20, The Real Deadline. At the beginning of this week, I posted on Facebook that a new episode was coming out on Thursday. I always try and post on Thursday my Thursday thoughts, and I thought it was, but when the time came to put it online, I found some things wrong with it, and I decided to redo it. (laughs) So again, it's a day late, and if anyone was excited for it on Thursday, I'm sorry to disappoint you. This is a practice in consistency for me, not perfection, so I'll keep trying. Here's a story for today. A while back, I was crying again, and my daughter sat by me and asked me why I was crying, and I told her it was because I had so many things I needed to do, and I couldn't do it all, and every day I tried, and I never got it all done, and I felt like it should get done, and it needed to get done, and I felt so frustrated that it hadn't got done, but my daughter sat with me a few minutes, and then she said lovingly, Mom... If you want to finish your list, maybe you shouldn't put so many things on it. (sighs) I laughed at her sweet perspective at that time, but as the months have gone by, I realized that her thought is a wise one for me. I was forcing myself under some deadlines that I had made up, and I was defining my worth by them. And I expected myself in some cases to be able to do things that I'm not in the habit of doing yet, or I don't know how to do yet. And this is where the thought model, C-T-F-A-R, I like to remember it as come this far, (laughs) like I've gotten to this point now, but what it actually stands for is circumstance, thought, feeling, action, result. And this model is just a method for organizing my brain. It helps me to realize and see what's in my control and what's out of my control. This way of thinking takes practice, but so do so many other things in my life, and I think it's worth it to watch my thoughts. So when I'm using the model, I start with the circumstance to determine what the real deadlines are. Deadlines that happen that I can't control. For example, a 24-hour day. That is a deadline and a circumstance. That is the time we have in the day. A year is a deadline. The day and time a wedding is scheduled is also a deadline and a circumstance. Circumstances are usually things that have already happened. We can't change the past. So it's helpful to look at it logically. Some deadlines are circumstances. They're the boring facts. But then there are deadlines that I make up in my head. 10 a.m. is a circumstance. And then my thoughts are all the things I want to get done by 10 a.m. And then when 10 a.m. comes, what I actually did becomes my circumstance. And I have thoughts about whether it was enough or not. But it literally is what it is. So there really aren't a lot of deadlines that will go into the circumstance line. It's reserved for things that have already happened, are scheduled to happen, and that others say or do. A circumstance does not include what another person thinks. That would go into my thought line because I don't actually get to know what anyone really thinks. I just get to know what they say or do. So in the case of my to-do list, it's helpful for me to put the correct pieces in the circumstance line, being what I have done in the 24 hours that I have. Circumstance. I have made my bed, tidied my room, and eaten breakfast, gotten dressed by 9 a.m. every day for a year. If I've actually done that, then it can go in the circumstance line. Then my thought, if I want to add on to that, is I think I can do more before 9 a.m., My thoughts are also what I might be able to get done or what I hope to do or don't think I can do. Maybe I want to think, I bet I can clean the kitchen and do what I regularly do by 9 a.m. My feeling will follow and it will be whatever vibration that thought causes in my body. And it'll be different for everyone. For me, I feel excited and motivated when I try on that thought. Then my action follows my feeling. It motivates it. My action would be to try to get up and do what I had already learned to do and maybe add a little more to it. And then my result will be I will try to clean the kitchen and eat breakfast, get dressed and make my bed 
tidy my room by 9 a.m. Do you see how that works? It helps me to look at it this way, and it helped me find my deadlines. I still have goals and dreams, and my actions will always be a reflection of my focused thoughts, which is cool. So I can practice changing my results by changing my focus thoughts and believing them. But then my results will become my circumstance again. So that's how the thought model works with deadlines. What was making me sad is that I had this to-do list and subconsciously I had the thought that I needed to do all of these things or I failed. I'm not enough. I'm not successful. But I can fail to do the things on my to-do list and still feel successful. I can also cut back my expectations by looking at what is. There's freedom and leverage in acknowledging and observing what is now without judging it, and then deciding what I want to think about it. So for me, I've decided to schedule less into my day. I'm starting small, and eventually I think I'll add more. But I'm no longer trying to shove all the things and more into one day. And even if I don't get those things done, I have my back. I know that I am awesome and worthwhile and able to do whatever I choose. But sometimes I choose to do other things than what's on my list, and I'm okay with that. So I feel like this is huge progress for me. I'm learning to do small and simple things well instead of trying to do all of the things and then breaking down and doing nothing. Some of the thoughts I've read recently have continued to help me reassess the deadlines I make for myself and for others. I read this thought by Diane Lumens. If I had my child to raise over again, I'd build self-esteem first and the house later. I'd finger paint more and point the finger less. I would do less correcting and more connecting. I'd take my eyes off my watch and watch more with my eyes. I would care to know less and know to care more. I'd take more hikes and fly more kites. I'd stop playing serious and seriously play. I would run through more fields and gaze at more stars. I'd do more hugging and less tugging. I'd see the oak tree in the acorn more often. I'd be firm less often and affirm much more. I'd model less about the love of power and more about the power of love. That's the end of that. But as I read that, I have lots of thoughts. Thoughts of judgment towards myself. Thoughts of compassion. Thoughts where I pat myself on the back thoughts of, I should have been different in the past, but really, I don't think so. I like to think that I didn't know what I didn't know for a reason, and now I think new thoughts, and I can be an ever-changing, growing, evolving version of me, just as imperfect and just as wonderful and always loved by God in my experiences. If I wish I could have done something in the past, what's keeping me from doing it now? That's a question I like to ask myself. We can't change the past. That's why it's neutral. That's why it's a circumstance. It literally is what it is. But we can, right now, come up with a plan and create a new future. What do you think it looks like? You're probably right. This is Christina Stead, and this is Just a Thought.